Hello, hi Facebook, hello, hi, welcome to Meet the Maker um, uh, on Friday and today I am meeting someone really, really interesting. Um, when I first met her, um, I only got to know one part of her story which is all about um, essential oils and how essential oils has helped her get out of um, postnatal depression but after I found out more about her oh my god it goes even further and so I'm not gonna say much more you have to meet her and you have to hear the story from her yourself I'm introducing Pamela Lim hi Pamela hi hi everyone <laughs> <laughs> right okay so Pamela can you tell us a bit about yourself first like you know just tell us um, where you grew up how you grew up and what you did in like what I say your past life before um, what you do now which is running doTERRA uh, okay uh, I grew up, grew up in Singapore in a very average family um, and uh, basically I'm into marketing I do online marketing I do social media how marketing. did you get into marketing well, many years ago, I actually started my first business when I was in 25. Yeah. And back then, I didn't have any knowledge of business, knew nothing about it. Straight across. Ah, okay, we're back. Okay. Okay. So basically, it was my girlfriend. Uh, back then, it was kind of having a recession time when I kind of graduated. Yeah. So it was a girlfriend of mine who says, you know, hey, why don't we start a business? And I didn't know anything about business, and so um, I went into a lot of debts. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So that was um, my story, my journey of uh, how I went into business. And how much debt were you in, if I can wow. ask? Like. Uh, <clears throat> it's about half a million. <gasps> yeah, half a million sing. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's that's quite a bit. Um, yeah. And that was over how how long? That was in that few years that I was doing the business. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, because I was very new, not sure. Yeah. They didn't have any mentors, and uh, you know that was. And then my friend who came into partnerships. Uh, left and I was you know all alone not knowing what to do and wow yeah I went into a lot of shit and wow yeah and then what happened how did you then move on how did you get yourself out of debt or sorry I'm just um, kind of conscious is that possible we turn yep. it down you hang on now? yeah okay sorry we've just got a TV in the background and I'm just conscious of um, wanting to give you the best sound quality so I'm just gonna get um, them to turn it down but actually well while, while she's doing that while we're doing that I'm gonna show you where we are we're at the doTERRA office and it's gorgeous here okay I'm just gonna show you around. right so this is doTERRA and I love the vibes and the products and how pretty the products are so um, you walk in and you get this sense of calm and peace and it's all purple and lavender it's gorgeous I can't wait to talk more about it but anyway so this is the office hello and that's the TV just right in front of us so that's the sound you hear in the background right so we'll continue um, Yes, so you, so we were at your story of um, you were in half a million dollars worth of debt. Yeah. Oh my God! And you were how old? Um, I was about twenty six, twenty seven. Yeah. Wow, very young. Yeah. Okay. Um, single. Yeah. Right. So, what does a single woman at that age in so much debt do then? Still quite old. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, well, I, I went into a lot of debts yeah. back then and I was kind of desperate for a way out. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, back then I, nev I didn't knew how. Yeah. So, um, when this was, I was before internet like went really big as well, right? Because yeah, a yeah, lot of yeah. people now can do a lot of things from the right, computer, right. social so media. That was, that was back then, there wasn't much of the internet. Yeah. Yeah, it was still the IRC chat. Yeah, oh my god, I remember those days. Yes, IRC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it was all the IRC chats and everything. So uh, back then I was kind of desperate, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, I also took loans from banks, from people, from friends, mm -hmm. and everything else. So um, 
when I was in too much debts and I couldn't handle it, you know, I went into depression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was in depression for many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then how? What happened? How did you? What well, did you do? Um, at 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 the lowest point of my life, basically, uh, I was uh, jobless. I was homeless. I was penniless. Wow. I was. Um, I was sleeping on the streets, yeah, and then you know, at East Coast Park or anywhere I could find, you know. Really? And then I had a friend who, um, who says, you know, why don't you uh, stay at my place, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, but that didn't help because uh, that friend of mine, who kind of promised to help me get out of debts, mm -hmm. actually eventually um, caused me into more debts. Yeah. How? So you know, he was like, he was telling me, you know, there's a way of getting out of that and mm -hmm. then uh, he says you know there's some kind of investment deal so mm. back then I was very naive and I was mm. very desperate so I kind mm. of like okay I thought it was true and then you know in the end I borrowed more money and then you know, I, that was how I ended up in so much debt and oh my god yeah so it's it's like and then you know he he ended up uh, in jail and then he was <gasps> gone and everything else <laughs> oh <laughs> wow yeah and so wow was, so then you so you racked up even more debt yeah so that's why you know that's um um uh, that that was how i went through all that shit you know and then in my most desperate times um you know i actually uh, ended up becoming a prostitute to survive and that was how i actually met my husband <laughs> oh wow yeah Oh wow! Yeah. Oh my God, I'm gonna have tears. That's just... Oh wow! That I got, I've got goosebumps, and I'm, I'm gonna tear soon. I'm gonna cry. That is amazing. Yeah. Oh oh, <laughs> oh! Thank you so much for sharing this. Thank yeah, you. Oh my so God, that is <clears throat> wow! And and you've written a book about your story, right? Yeah, that's right. So um, and and this is the book here. Yeah. So actually. Um, wrote my book Love Heals. Love Heals. So turn it around. Turn it around. And do you want to talk about your book, what your book is about, and how you how like I mean to to tell your story is one thing, but to write a book about it and put that story out there, that's a whole new level of courage. How? Hi, Eveline, you just joined. Thanks for joining. I uh, hope you can hear us. This is amazing. You gotta watch this and listen to this story. So um tell us how how did you even find the courage to write your story and you know okay, and, and uh, <laughs> bring it to a book? Well, it actually took me um, many many years. Yeah. Um, when I first came upon the idea of writing my book, uh, that was somewhere in twenty eleven. Wow. Okay. And, yeah. uh, what gave you the idea? Um, I was. Back then, I was uh, running events, event management, mm -hmm. and then uh, I was... Oh, okay, so hang on. Yeah. So after you met your husband, what happened? We need to finish well, this story. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, when I met my husband, I was already in depression. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was uh, already having uh, many suicide attempts. Mm -hmm. So what happened was, there was once that I was so stressed out and I committed suicide again. Oh, and uh, Because you felt... Just so alone. Yeah, it was no way so out. stressful, and yeah. I I didn't have many friends, yeah. um, who could I could talk to. Mm -hmm. So I was really in bad uh, bad shape then, and then I remember that I was in East Coast Beach. You know how mm -hmm. big that that is, mm -hmm. and I just said, okay, I'm gonna walk into the water. <laughs> yeah, and actually I did just that. You walked into yeah, the sea. Yeah, and 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 somehow, um, my husband who mm -hmm. who. Who at that time wasn't yeah, your husband yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that time we were not married and he found me, you know. He found me. So he found he like he found he knew you were he found you at East Coast Park. Yeah, he didn't know where I was. Oh but my he god, wow. Found me. Okay, okay. So, you know, it kind of um it was amazing because it's such a big it's yeah, it's a, a huge yeah, park. East Coast, for those of you who don't know, East Coast Park is literally um, the, 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 the kind of like the coastal part of Singapore. And it's huge. Yes. It's like a few kilometers long. So it's not that easy to find one person <laughs> in this like few kilometers long of beach and park. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of things going on. So that, that's amazing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so he found um, you, he stopped you. Well, what happened was I was already out in uh, 
pretty far away yeah. and and what happened was I was really walking very deep and halfway through I just kind of stopped midway and I didn't know why I couldn't yeah. you know move on and then I, I remember that back then uh, my my husband who was who was not we were not married back then yeah he was actually at the sh sh um, the, the shore, the shore. Yeah, yeah and then he and another guy uh, kept calling and shouting out to me to come back oh but I kind of just froze in the water I couldn't do anything yeah I couldn't turn back I couldn't move forward and then in the end um, uh, it was a police case they got got the, the civil defense and the police to come yeah. to rescue me and yeah. then it, it got into quite a big matter you know I was in uh, I was in jail for one day you one were night. in jail <laughs> yeah because committing suicide is actually an offense are you kidding yeah, me yeah yeah you you actually it's it's it's, it's an offense to kill yourself so, oh my god so kind of like... you get jailed for wanting to kill yourself I mean like I'll kill myself like in jail like that that doesn't help does it yeah. hi Lee <laughs> Yeah, but it, it's true because um, it's uh, it's an offense to actually commit suicide. Okay. And I was actually put in jail. Um, Gosh! Wow. Yeah, for a night actually. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, it's uh, it was an an, an experience for me because yeah. um, you know I've never been in jail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and it's very funny because uh, when I was in jail that night, they actually did a raid. Of um, Geylang, uh -huh. the, yeah, the, the red districts, light district, yeah. yeah, of Singapore, and then they actually brought in a the whole bus <gasps> loads of prostitutes. prostitutes. Yeah, <laughs> they were interviewing in front of me, and I was like, Oh my oh god! My god. <laughs> and these were people. Some of them you might know. No, they were all foreigners. Oh, a lot right. of them oh, were all wow. foreigners. Okay. They could be from China. They could be from, I don't know, from Russia. From yeah everywhere in the world they were all on uh, visitors pass yeah. and they came in here <gasps> yeah. to make some quick bucks and everything else so it was so amazing because I was in jail because I committed suicide and right in front of me yeah. I saw the scene and I was like I was like oh my god you know I, I actually went through uh, you know that what I was doing yeah you know? and I was like but have oh. you stopped prostituting by I this time I, I kind of stopped in a way but yeah. you know I was like looking at them and I was like, oh my god, I could be one of them who yeah. was being caught. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, oh. and it was so scary because uh, I saw them interviewing the girls and asking them questions and everything else. Yeah. And then, um, because they, they actually had to put me uh, in a different cell. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they didn't want to mix me yeah. because my, my case was very You're different. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they actually moved me into a small corner and then they actually put the rest in that whole entire yeah. cell. So yeah. It was so, uh, yeah. Wow. Do you have that in your book? Did you write yeah, about that? Yeah, in yeah, yeah. I actually wrote okay. that. I uh, wrote about yeah all the incidences, um, my ups and downs, my challenges of what I went through, um, you know, and how I met my husband. And oh my then... god, I'm gonna have to read this book. I'm, I'm so gonna have to get this book. So Love Heals, and I actually put in the link um, on Facebook that people who want to buy your book can contact you directly, yeah. right? Um, but okay, so I mean, so so more details. I mean, this this we can just go on forever. We can talk forever. Like this woman is amazing. She her story is amazing. Um, but I really want to get into how you then came across. Um, the use of essential oil to um, help you mm -hmm. get out of depression. So can you, so you know, if we can kind of move forward okay. after that. Um, and so basically I was in depression for about seven years. Wow. Um, even after I got married, I was uh, I was shutting myself out from the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's I, not just like a switch, is it? Yeah I, yeah. I didn't have the courage to kind of face the world. Yeah. So yeah. it took me quite a while and um, I was, I, I had very little friends, I, 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 I just kept to myself, my yeah. family. And in 2014, when I had my third boy, mm -hmm. um, I went through postnatal depression, I had breast infection, I had a lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I actually met a friend who was in doTERRA and he actually introduced me to the essential oils. Mm -hmm. And it has actually helped me and my family um, with the healing. Mm -hmm. uh, with it helps me with like stabilizing emotions, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with stress better, and you wow. know, yeah, and helps also help me, uh, my children with um, uh, the common 
things like cough, flu, cuts and colds and... I know, we yeah. were just talking about that because <laughs> Emily's quite ill today. She has fever and she's been having a really bad runny yeah. nose. So we were just talking about, you know, um, Pamela, you were so kindly off, like sharing about which oils I can yeah, use. Now. Yeah. Peppermint, you said, yes, that's which right. is really good for fever. All right. And then what else did you, you suggest? Frankincense? Um, yeah, actually for fever, I actually used... Uh, Frankincense as well as peppermint. Yeah. On my children, uh, I have my youngest who is a two and a half years old. Yeah. So when he had fever, I instead of bringing him to the doctor, sometimes we will just apply the oils. Yeah. But and diluted. Amazing, yeah, yeah. And amazingly, um, when we apply peppermint and frankincense on his soles of feet yeah. and on his spine, yeah. um, he just needed to take half a day to a day yeah. and he gets fully recovered from his fever. Wow. Yeah, so it's a very good um, yeah, it's a very good way yeah. of uh, not just helping myself with uh, stabili stabilizing my emotions but also for my children, my family, um, any issues that they have. They love the oils and my older, my two older boys actually know what oils to use because I have a whole case of oils in home wow. and they will just take it <laughs> and like self-diagnose. <laughs> so what oils, what are the particular oils that you use to um, stabilize your emotions mm. and that would help when you're feeling down or depressed, someone who's depressed? Because we all have our days yep. and what, what is an uplifting um, oil that can help? Um, for me, I always use Balance. Balance mm -hmm. is a very good oil for me to start my day. Mm -hmm. It uh, actually stabilizes emotions. Mm -hmm. And for people... What's Balance who, made up of? Uh, it's actually it's a combination of a few oils. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can't really remember the ingredients, but it's, uh, it's quite a combination okay, anyway. So I'll have a look. So this is your bag, your magic yeah. bag of oils. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think... I'm going to sh show a few of Oh, wow. Okay, so they come in these little bottles. So, so this is... Right, okay, I'm just going to put it out there. So I'm a Young Living user. I, I've been into essential oils for the longest time. I don't know, maybe more than 10 years. And I got introduced to Young Living by some friends. Um, so I'm, I was always very familiar with Young Living. And doTERRA, I became more familiar in, I would say, since I met you maybe a few months ago. So <laughs> I'm really curious, and I'm sure there's quite a few of you out there who are. What is? What would you say, in your point of view, is the difference between Young Young Living and doTERRA. Not saying one is better than the other, but just what is the key difference or like, you know, the, the differentiating point? Uh, I, I think, okay, I, I, I'm not sure, I'm not um, into Young Living, yeah. so I'm not sure about Young Living. Yeah. But when I was introduced to doTERRA, what I liked about doTERRA was the science behind it. So mm. we have a founder called Dr. Hill. Mm. He's a um, someone who is into the R&D and the sciences behind the essential oils and they actually, doTERRA comes up with a grade called the CPTG grade mm -hmm. which is the certified pure therapeutic grade mm -hmm. and um, they make sure that all the oils are so potent, so pure mm -hmm. and safe mm -hmm. um, it's all 100% uh, pure and safe Thera therapy, therapy grade, grade. Yeah, yeah, therapeutic and grade before they actually put it uh, for sales mm -hmm. and before they uh, Every batch before even they sell it, they will actually do a test yeah. to make sure the potency is as of the best quality. Yeah. And you know, I, I love I love it because uh, they are not just about just a product. Yeah. But they actually have the science behind it. They actually do a lot of tests. Yeah. Uh, a lot of chemical testings, a lot of reports, and uh, there's always a scientific proven thing that it works. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I love about doTERRA and. I'm not sure about Young Living actually, yeah. Oh, you got me really intrigued now. I'm sitting here and I'm smelling all these oils and I'm like, oh wow, I need to get all this. It just smells amazing. So I'm just going to quickly show people. Yes, you have orange. This is so the balance. balance. Yeah, this is the one, the balance. Right, okay, so that's yeah. balance. Let's have a look. Um, so balance, you say uh, you would recommend for um, balancing your emotions, stress. stress. And, yeah. So it's got, it's got a mix of all chamomile, boswellia, camphora. Okay, so it's quite a good quite a mix. What else do we have here? So if people are in depression, what I will always say is use citrus oil. So oh, let's say, yes, for example, wild orange. About that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wild orange is a very good one. Mm. Uh, citrus oil. smells oils, amazing. Yeah, you should smell it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it smells really... Oh, oh, wow. Okay, yeah, wow. It smells really... Oh, okay, I'm, I'm feeling... I'm feeling good. <laughs> 
smells amazing. Yeah. That smells really nice. Mm. Mm. Okay, wild orange. We should use citrus for um, depression. That people yeah. who are depressed Any or feeling oils, down. Oils like lime, lemon, wild orange, bergamot. Anything that citrusy. It's all about uplifting our moods, making mm. us happier, um, making us uh, feel better. Mm. You know. So if 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 you are like feeling down or you know. Um, not in a really good mood. Mm -hmm. I think uh, use citrus oils to uplift yourself, make you feel happier. I love yeah. it! <laughs> and I love it! And that ties in nicely to our last point because I'm just conscious of time. I'm going to wrap up now, unfortunately, because yeah, yeah. I just like to go on. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think, well, you know, because this whole program and what I talk about is all about how to live the life you love and how to be happy and positive. So, you know, what would be your one uh, message or tip? I wouldn't say advice because advice is sort of like, you know, I'm better than you, but it's not. It's like, what do you do or what would you recommend people to do to live the life you love? I think um, a lot of times especially people in Singapore they always compromise mm. with what they want to do mm. I think for me I've learned that you know um, when you love something when you're passionate about it when you have a dream that you really want to pursue and just go and find a way to pursue that mm. to have that fulfillment in your life because um, you know rather than you could be working a job that gives you maybe a good good uh, salary, salary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but if you're not happy and you're living an empty life mm -hmm. day in and day out dragging yourself to work I guess that's that's not the point of mm -hmm. uh, you know having a fulfilling life and finding you know your passion and what mm -hmm. you love to do mm -hmm. so I've um, come across many people and uh, I, I always tell them you know if you if you love something you're passionate about something go and find a way to pursue it mm -hmm. and something that you really brings you joy every day mm -hmm. gives you the smile makes you happy doing what you love to do mm -hmm. and then you know uh, figure how you could make that into uh, income for you a sustainable mm -hmm. uh, a su sustainable living mm -hmm. you know while while you are still doing your job or mm -hmm. whatever and then and then slowly move on to mm -hmm. what you love mm -hmm. and that that would really make a lot of difference to living a happy a fulfilled life you know yeah and I agree and I mean and with the internet these days I just find that you know there's almost no excuse anymore yes. to not be able to do something I mean a lot of people then say yeah I would like to do that but I don't know what I love so that's a whole different topic altogether yeah, that's right? right to how do you identify yeah. what, and, and find the courage to courage. acknowledge it, what you actually really love and go yeah. for it but I love what you just said I think mm -hmm. that will ring so true for so many people out there I feel the passion in you even when you're talking, it's amazing. Um, just you're just an amazing woman. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You, Thank, Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle, for inviting me Aww. for this interview. So I hope you guys are learning something. I hope you're enjoying it. You know, yeah. Do stay tuned to her <laughs> videos. Yeah, yeah, she's an amazing woman. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I'm gonna sign off now. Okay. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye from Singapore. <laughs>